Paul in Brooklyn. Trump will never talk to you now. He knows who's on his side and who's just fake news. And hate to break it to you, snap on air. <laughs> What's the deal with the air? You're the fake freak who's lying to the people, not the guy sitting in the White House. And oh, yeah, how is that interview request going? It's true. No presidential interview request into the White House. Not a one. It's true. I swear. I have not asked for a sit down with the president. I don't want a sit down with the president. I know that sounds crazy. That's not because I dislike the president. Remember, I talked to him quite a bit over the years, long before, and certainly during the time he was a candidate for president. I just see little to be gained getting him for the customary 10 minutes now or adding my name to the long and impressive list of people who've already interviewed the president now, including a lot of great people here. I've learned something from every chat. I'm just not interested in joining the chat. Again, not because I don't cover the president, maybe because I can just as effectively do that without interviewing the president. Maybe that's because the one thing I've learned about interviewing presidents is time is tight. And Republican or Democrat, they're pretty good good at running out the clock. That doesn't mean sit downs with presidents don't add value. Just that my sitting down with this one probably would not. Now, some of you say it's a good thing I don't ask because it would save the president the trouble of turning me down. There is probably some truth to that, because even as he was running for president, Mr. Trump wasn't exactly a fan of mine, especially when my coverage veered from what he liked, like when I had Mitt Romney on during the heat of the campaign and the former governor let him have it. I cannot in good conscience vote for a person who has been as um, degrading um, and, and um, uh, disruptive uh, and, uh, and unhinged. My questioning months later, President Trump's treatment of his own cabinet officials and later Republican senators probably didn't help. Pointing the finger at your team only invites them to point a very different finger back at you. Who would have your back if you keep kicking the guys on your side in the ass? Or maybe it was the time I pointed out the president can't demand loyalty from others if he doesn't show loyalty himself. Loyalty works both ways, Mr. President, and whether you think you're justified or not, punching down ain't exactly helping you punch through. Or when I tried to separate fake news from merely news the president doesn't like. Mr. President, it's not the fake news media that's your problem. It's you. It's not just your tweeting, it's your scapegoating. It's your refusal to see that sometimes you're the one who's feeding your own beast. I guess that's not the way to secure an interview with the president, even if I also was reporting on good things happening under the president. The market surge. Now, this is just looking at the first 100 days. He's right up there with other presidents, of course, in the first 100 days, coming from already heady levels, though. Now, this does not take into account, if you really want to look at everything here, the roughly 14 percent gain he has experienced and the markets have experienced since he was first elected. We've got four trillion dollars added to market value. Why those markets were up in the first place? that they're optimistic that this president will goose the economy. On this day, we scored a 51st record close for the Dow in the year, more than any other full year in history. You get the idea. Fair stuff and balanced stuff, the regulation purge, the stuff that Wall Street liked, even as I reported on the personal behavior and emotional outburst, it did not. Not the way to win friends in the White House, but the only way I know to cover the White House, yes, even if it means never getting an interview with this president, and yes, even if it means never even asking for one in the first place.